Hello, and welcome to another episode of Japanese Snack Reviews. This is episode 13, if my, my calculations are correct, or maybe it's not. And, as always, I'm going to go taste some uh, Japanese snacks that I've received in the various Japan crates that I've gotten over the months. And today, we are starting off with a really curious one. This is Chicken Ramen, as you can see there. There's a conspicuous zero there. Now, I've used Google Lens, um, and this got me very interested. So I was about to boil the kettle, get ready to cook some chicken ramen, and then I translated some of this stuff and um, came to the conclusion that, as you can see here, there are two different ways to eat it. You can either eat the block of ramen, or break it up in neat little pieces. That's right. The zero means the minutes of preparation. So this is ramen you eat raw. Uh, according to one of the warnings, I think it's that one there uh, that are translated, it actually says that it doesn't taste good when rehydrated. So, I know in Japan, eating raw ramen, well, I mean it's been cooked, but eating like blocks of ramen isn't exactly super uncommon. Some people do buy these as snacks. So, I'm interested. Uh, now, I can either nibble or break it up. I don't know what to do, really. I, I think I'm going to just take a nibble, I suppose. There is by Nissin, uh, who I do like. I've had quite a few different Nissin ramen products over the years. But each one I've added water to. So, there we go. It is a block of ramen. Um, right, cool. I'm just going to go take a bite of this raw block of cooked ramen, I guess. Be happy. All right. You know what? I take my apprehensions back. Um, so I have had raw ramen before. I, I keep calling it raw ramen. It is safe to eat. It's not raw as in, you know, unsafe. Uh, years and years ago in Japan, Korea, I think it's like 2019 or something, they did give little plastic bags with ramen in. Uh, well, I mean, like plastic container kind of things like this is. Um, and that was meant to be eaten raw as well. And I tried it and I actually kind of liked it. And you know what? This has brought that memory back. This is really nice. Um, so, obviously it's very crunchy. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe that might put some people off. But the chicken flavour is pretty strong. It's like eating chicken flavoured crisps or potato chips. Um, yeah, this is really nice actually. You know what? I don't think I'd regularly eat, um, you know, like, ramen like this. But this isn't bad. This is actually quite nice. I wonder if there are other zero-minute preparation Nissin products, because uh, I like chicken stuff, but if there's, like, a spicy one, that would be amazing. I'd, I'd be totally on board with that. Okay, that's, that's definitely changed my mind. I thought I'd start this video trying out a weird product and being like, hmm, not ready for me. I'm... I'm looking forward to eating the rest of this now. This is really nice. Let me know in the comments if you guys have eaten raw, you know, versions of ramen like this, because, uh, I don't know, maybe it is a big thing, and I've just never bothered to try, because, I mean, there's instructions on the back, I just follow those, really. Yeah, pretty darn nice. Well done, Nissen. Um, you know what? I, I've, I've learned to not judge a chicken block by its cover. On to the next snack. Now, all right, let's get into some Kit Kat. So, um, this came in the Lucky Box, which didn't actually come with a pamphlet to explain everything. But, according to Google Lens, this says Dark Matcha, um, which I am very excited for. I think that's something like adult taste or something, which is a weird phrase until you realise that Dark Matcha, obviously, is probably not a flavour big with children. Uh, so, ooh. There you go. That's, uh, that looks very nice. Let's crack it open. I am a big fan of Matcha Green Tea Kit Kat. Now, dark matcha. I'm quite curious to see what the difference is, if any. Uh, hey, it is that, that, like, standard green. Oh, wow. That is a hell of a colour for a Kit Kat. That is actually darker than the green tea ones I remember having. Right, well, nothing more than to uh, give it a try. Wow, that was incredible. So, I, I definitely can tell the difference. 
So the green tea Kit Kats definitely have obviously a green tea flavour. I think it uses green tea powder or something in with the chocolate. This is like double strength, basically. As soon as you bite in, you get a green tea flavour, like a matcha green tea specifically. And as you chew, it just like increases. That really is like taking a sip of like a really strong matcha green tea. That, that's genuinely impressive. That is amazing. Now, it is a bit bitter though. It's got that bitter note as well. So if you don't like bitter things, I wouldn't recommend this. But if you're a big green tea fan like I am, uh, especially matcha green tea, highly recommend giving this one a go if you can find it. Dark matcha. I think this is up there now. I think this is one of my favourites. The lemon salt was really nice as well. Uh, strawberry was pretty cool, but I'd definitely say dark matcha, I think, is better than the regular matcha flavour. Uh, right, on to the next snack. Alright, it is time for some shimmy con. Uh, so I've been very excited to try this, actually. So, if you remember a few years ago, uh, in previous Japan crates, we had a pack of shimmy choco, which is basically kind of this but cut up into little stars. Uh, but I've never seen it as a bar before, or well, a bar, you know what I mean, kind of a an elongated star, I suppose. Uh, so this is chocolate flavour, uh, as you can tell from the colour, so I'm going to go give it a bite. Mmm, that is really nice. The cool thing about Shimmy Choco um, is that it is chocolate flavoured, kind of like wheat puff kind of stuff. But the chocolate on it is legitimately like melted chocolate. It's not just chocolate flavoured wheat or whatever. Or whatever the puffs are made out of. This is really nice. Um, it's incredibly Moorish as well. But no, it, it's kind of got like a really thin layer of chocolate all around it. And, you know, chocolate inside as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a while since I've had a shimmy con, and it is absolutely as nice as I remember it being. Uh, big thumbs up for this. Right, on to the next snack. Alright, it is time for some mini peach. So, if you remember from uh, last episode, I think it was, we had mini ramune. Um, so it's this, obviously, but it tastes of ramune. But this time, it tastes of peach. Will these taste much different? Uh, probably not, but we'll see. I'm gonna pour some out into my hand. So like last time, they are small kind of hard candy things. So I'm gonna go give them a try. You know what? I think these might be better. Um, so the last ones were really nice. Obviously they were Ramune flavour. I love Ramune sweets. But these have kind of an extra thing. So they taste a bit Ramune-esque anyway. Um, you've got that kind of slightly tangy, fizzy kind of, you know, taste going on. But also you've got a bit of a hint of peach, is it, with it as well. Yeah, honestly, this is like a step up. The first one was like basic, and this is like the next level. Um, yeah, the the peach taste is just right. It's quite strong, but it doesn't overstay its welcome. Uh, and as I say, you've got that little Ramune kick as well. Very nice. Um, I'm glad I've got two of these now, because one came in the most recent Japan crate as well. Uh, right, on to the next snack. All right, you ready for some brown sugar? Shout out to all you Rolling Stones fans out there. Um, so this is a brown sugar stick, I think, from Okinawa, according to Google Lens. But from Foo, I can't read pretty much any of the packaging, but I, I want to say I've had one of these years and years ago. So it is a brown sugar stick. It's slightly cracked, unfortunately. Um, there you go. That's the inside. That's the outside. I'll take a bite. Ooh, the outside is very soft. I don't know what I was expecting exactly, but it's got like a bit of a, a layer to it, like a skin. I don't know. So that's the that's the bar itself. Um, right, I'm going to take a proper bite now. Mmm, this is really nice, actually. Um, it's very crumbly. The inside is super, super soft. Um, it almost it feels like it's biting into a sponge or something. Um, but yeah, the outside is, obviously, it's brown sugar. It's kind of melted uh, as, like, a layer. But that is really nice. Um, that's a lot sweeter than I expected it to be as well. 
I thought with such a kind of big bar that it wasn't going to be so sweet. But yeah, that is really nice. It's incredibly light as well. Like super, super light and airy. That is lovely. Um, yeah, that's that's pleasantly surprised me there. Very nice. Right, on to the next snack. All right, let's get into some Pocky. It's uh, It's been a while actually since I've had some Pocky and this is the Almond Crush flavour uh, that came in the Lucky Box. I can give this to a friend or someone. Ha! I'm not going to do that, I'm going to eat them myself. So I'm guessing there's two, yeah, two packs. Okay, cool. Uh, so if you're new to Pocky somehow, I'll show you what they are in a second. But they're kind of, well, actually you can see them through there. They're kind of biscuit sticks covered in chocolate. And almond is a flavour I quite enjoy. Uh, oh, this, hang on, BRB. Okay, I'm back. So, let's grab a stick of Pocky. Oh, or, or two, I guess. Oh, wow. Wow, this is proper covered. Okay, they weren't lying about the almond thing. So, we got biscuit and it's covered in chocolate. I'm going to go take a bite. That was really nice, actually. Um, there's more almond than you'd think. Because uh, I, I just thought it would be like little almond bits, maybe, or almond flavoured chocolate. But actually, this does exactly what it says on the box. Uh, it is covered in chocolate, but also in almond bits. This It works really well. Um, obviously, if you don't like almonds or have a nut allergy, I guess this wouldn't really be up your alley. But in terms of Pocky, yeah, this is really nice. I mean, the Pocky chocolate is always, always really nice. The biscuit's always really crunchy. Uh, and the addition of almonds really does, like, add to it. That's, that's really pleasant. Um, yeah, chocolate and almond go really well together. And Pocky have done it once again. They are, yet again, the chocolate-covered biscuit finger king. Which isn't hard, I guess, but... Anyway, on to the next snack, which is a DIY kit. Alright, it is time for the Sumiko Garashi Purun Chu Chu um, DIY kit. What a, what a mouthful. So, um, this, if you remember, came from... I can't remember which box it was, but... I think it's the New Year one. Um, this lets you make a jelly friend. And there's one of four varieties, and I happen to get the cutest one, I think. Who looks a bit like Quagsire from Pokemon? So I think the idea of this, uh, it's a little bit involved. So it's going to take me a while. You kind of press some moulds together, fill it with water, dry it out, put some powder into the water, put the wa powdered water back into the like mould, and then leave it for half an hour or something. So I'm going to open it up, because uh, you also get a bit of scenery, I think. Uh, so that will be interesting to like display it with. Uh, so, oh, okay, that's that's actually a little bit smaller than I was expecting. So yeah, I think it's like, you, you, you press it together. Oh, you press it together this way, I got you. And we've got the uh, scenery, but I'm not going to be pulling that out until the end, because I want it to be really special for you guys. So, I think I meant to separate this uh, and then join it like... Hang on, I'll be obby. Alright, so I've pressed them together. It's quite easy. Uh, as you, you can kind of see the outline of the little fella here. He's got his little eyes there and this is the back with the tail. And that's the place uh, where you put water in. So, I'm going to go fill this with water now, and th there's like a lot of involved steps. So I won't show you every step, because there's like eight of them. But I'll show you some key steps, so uh, BRB. Alright, so I filled this with water, uh, as you can see. I've now got to pour this water into a cup. Uh, there's a mixture in there, which I haven't pulled out yet. I'm meant to kind of stir it, or pour half of it into another cup, mix it, then add water into that. Then pour it back into here. So I'm going to do that all off camera because that's just going to be tedious. But I'll be I'll be. All right. So uh, as you can see, I poured the uh, powder. Well, I poured the water out of the mould into a cup. I poured the powder into another cup and half of the water. I mixed it. I put the rest of the water in, mixed it again, and poured it in. And as you can see, we've got our little blue mould with our little dude chilling. Now. I, I feel like I've got a little bit too little here, um, but unfortunately it kind of turns into a jelly quite quickly and it's hard to pour it out. I tried to spoon everything out, but we've got most of him anyway. 
Uh, so, all that's left now is to wait 30 minutes and then he'll have solidified and then I'll put the like background together and we'll take a look at uh, my new friend, my, my one and only friend. Right, I'll be back in 30 minutes. Alright, it has been 30 minutes. Oh well, just over 30 minutes actually. And I think it's set. Uh, I mean, nothing's coming out. That's always good. And there is a bit of a like jelly gleam to it. So I've gone ahead and constructed the background thing as well. It's a little bit of cardboard. That kind of causes it to stick up a little bit. Um, sadly, there's not much I can do about that. But this is his new home. Uh, so I'm going to pull it apart now. And, ah, oh god, it fell. Okay, well, he's a very jelly, he's a very jelly boy. Uh, that's his feet, hang on. Let's take a look at his face. Ah, oh, very, um, hard to make out on the camera, to be honest, and in real life. Um, but there we are, we have a blue jelly, uh, I don't know what he is exactly, I'll be honest, I'll take the moulds and put them to the side there. So there you go. There's the little, I'm going to drop the camera a bit. Never mind, I can't drop it much more. There we go. Well, he's in his home and he smells delicious. Uh, right. Well, that's it for this snack. Um, on to the next one. Oh God, what happened? No, um, I did take a bite of him. Uh, yeah, you know what? That's pretty nice. Um, it's kind of, it's still got that DIY kind of flavour. It's very, um, it's very light and sugary. It's a, a little bit maybe fruity, but hard to really put my um, taste buds on. I was going to say finger, but you don't really taste stuff with your fingers. Yeah, um, it, it's quite nice. It's, it is a lot of preparations for 30 minutes um, to have. I mean, it's kind of cute. You can, you can kind of see his face and stuff. Honestly, I am kind of sad that they didn't give you multiple packets or something. Uh, I appreciate the cost would have gone up more, but, you know, having these moulds now, I'm like, oh, I could maybe, I, I guess I could make a little jelly things if I got jelly mix or something. But yeah, overall, pretty nice taste. Uh, I do like the background. I'll maybe use this for something, some like mini figures or something. But yeah, very, um, very cute. Uh, and it tastes tastes nice too. Um, I do regret having bitten my friend in half now, but that's life. Uh, right, on to the next snack. All right, time for some chocolate umaibo. I'm uh, quite excited for this one. So umaibo are typically savoury kind of corn sticks. Uh, you know, kind of prawn or soy sauce and stuff like that. But this one, taste of chocolate. Ooh, it looks like chocolate too. So yeah, I'm very excited. I think it's actually covered in melted chocolate, which is even cooler. Uh, right, I'm just going to go take a bite. I'll be honest, um, it's alright. Um, there's not much going on with that, to be honest. The chocolate is nice enough, but there's not a ton of it. And the kind of, the corn puff part of it isn't all that flavourful. Um, what I quite like about Umaibo is the savoury versions are quite strong in flavour. They're not massive snacks, but you know, there's um, th there's there's like a strong taste to them. But this doesn't really work that well, I'll be honest. Um, yeah, I, I, I appreciate the effort. You know, I always like seeing different versions of like a snack. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fine. The chocolate's decent, but... I don't know, I, I think savoury umaibos work a lot better, probably. Uh, right, on to the next snack. Alright, it is time for the Sequoia Strawberry Chocolate Bar. Very interesting. Um, it's, I think, strawberry filled chocolate? Or maybe the chocolate itself is strawberry flavoured. Uh, there's only one way to... Ooh. Oh, okay, I think the chocolate itself is strawberry flavoured. That's like a strange colour. It's like, okay, so that, that's regular chocolate coloured, and that's like pink-brown kind of stuff. Very interesting. Uh, right, let's go take a bite. That was really nice. So it's got a little bit of uh, biscuit in the middle as well. 
which kind of surprised me. It was a bit crunchy. And yeah, honestly, so I've had strawberry chocolate from Japan quite a few times. Um, if you've had it before, it's a very distinct taste. Uh, they all kind of taste the same. But thinking of it, I think this is the largest strawberry chocolate thing I've had. Because usually they come in really small little kind of things that you get a decent taste of it, but they're, they're so small that, you know, the taste doesn't really last. But this is a decent sized bar, actually. This is really nice. Um, it is artificial kind of strawberry, but I don't know, it's not fully artificial though. I, I can taste like strawberry juice or something in it. So I don't know if it is a combination or something, or they've just perfected the taste, but that is really nice. I like the um, crunchy biscuit as well. It kind of brings it all together. I wish it was a little bit thicker, but honestly, that is really nice. I'm gonna keep an eye out for these Sequoia strawberry chocolate bars. Uh, right. On to the next snack. Alright, it is time for some Snow March Salted Chips. Uh, I don't think I've ever had any Snow March before. I think that's the... I think that's the brand anyway, or maybe it's not. Uh, oh, these are Pride Potato. Aha! Pride Potato's the brand. There you go. So, these are salted potato chips, basically. There you go. Um... Yeah, I'm guessing they are just sort of regular salted flavour. Ooh, ooh, they're actually kind of thick. Pride potato tend to actually be quite thick. I keep forgetting this is pride potato. Yeah, that is, uh, that's that's got some proper thickness. Right, let's give them a try. Wow, that had some real crunch to it. That is, um, it's as thick as it looks. Like, they're not all super, super thick. I, I think I, I picked up a particularly thick one. But that is really nice. Um, so, it is fairly standard salted kind of flavour. If you don't like plain salted potato chips, you know, this isn't going to wow you really or blow your mind. But, honestly, that is really pleasant. Um, there is a bit of a, like, quite a strong potato taste as well, which I think I've said about other pride potato stuff. But, you don't always get that with potato, potato chips. But, with this, you can really tell they are, like... A bit more organic or naturally made, I think. But yeah, overall that is really nice. The salt is like just right. It is a little bit saltier than other like plain um, potato chips. So that, that's really nice. Right, on to the last snack. All right, it's time to end on something I've been quite excited for. This is Dipping Pero Chocolate Sticks. Uh, and as you can t tell, it's like one of those tube things that comes with biscuit sticks and some chocolate dipping and a very cute face on the top. They're now going to peel off and we'll never see again. Ooh. Yeah, right then. So as you can see, there's some like chocolate sauce stuff here and there are sticks below it. So they're kind of like biscuity sticks. Um, they're kind of sweet on their own, to be honest. But the whole point... Ooh, hang on. This is a little bit hard. No, never mind. But the whole point of it is to dunk it in some chocolate. So, I'm going to go take a bite. That was pretty nice. Um, they're very reminiscent of... So, years ago... I can't remember the brand of it now. But there used to be very similar things that I'd get as a kid. Um, and yeah, it, it's pretty much the same. The chocolate is a little bit more subtle. Um, I remember the chocolate from the brand I had being quite strong. Uh, this, of course, being Japanese chocolate, it does taste a little bit different anyway. And yeah, it's not as overwhelmingly uh, sweet. So it, it's quite nice. It, it feels a bit lighter, if that makes sense. I'm sure this is horrifically high in calories and sugar and all that. But, you know, no one needs snacks to stay healthy. Anyway, that about wraps up my ja this episode of Japanese Snack Reviews. Thank you guys very much for watching. Once again, I didn't have a drink this time. Uh, I was going to, but I'm kind of going through the February crate at the moment. Um, and there wasn't a drink with that one, so I've, I think I've got a few to do, so I might do two in the next episode. I don't know. But that basically wraps it up. I will obviously be doing more Japanese snack reviews in the future because I've got like three crates to go through, uh, not including the crate that's going to arrive in about a week or two for the next month. So um, stay tuned for that. Let me know in the comments if you've tried any of these snacks as well or if you recommend other snacks that are similar 
or something. Uh, I'm always open to getting new snacks, even if it means not getting them through Japan Crate, I am happy to order them from Japan itself as well. But yeah, right, thanks for sticking around. I'll leave you a playlist of my other Japanese snack reviews here, and I'll leave YouTube choose a random video here. And until next time, goodbye.